On today's episode of Locked On Angels, we're recapping game two against the Tampa Bay Rays. We're sharing two pitching prospects that you should be watching this season. And what is Tyler Anderson doing this year that he didn't do last year? Because we like it. It's time to get locked on with Mike and John. And this is Locked On Angels. You are Locked On Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to give back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts like Lance951 did. Thanks for the five stars. Says he listens every morning, and we appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment, it's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Thanks for being here for this episode of Lockdown Angels, where it's your team every day. You've got the Fresh Brothers here with you, a.k.a. the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. It's our third season here at Lockdown Angels. We're talking Angels baseball five days a week, all throughout the season, Monday through Friday, every single weekday. We appreciate you being a Lockdown every day or with us on today's show. What's Tyler Anderson doing this year that's different from last year so far he's had a lot of success and we're going to dive into why coming up on the show but also we're going to tell you about two young pitchers that you should be watching this season that are in the minor leagues we're looking forward to that mike let's get into the recap of last night's game the angels lost six to four against the tampa bay rays why don't we talk about that yeah patrick sandoval was on the mound and he went five innings gave up six hits four runs four earned three walks and six k's 101 pitches johnny it didn't look like he was even going to make it to the fifth inning no because he was throwing a lot of pitches over 25 each inning but he did recover after some really long innings we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute but john you texted me as the game got going, and it was probably second or third inning, you texted me, and so why don't you why don't you share what it is that you sent me? I just said I I don't know how else to say it, but if anybody doesn't look like they have a game plan when they go out there, it's Patrick Sandoval. It feels yeah. like he's just throwing whatever up there, Mike. And the reason why somebody like Tyler Anderson has been successful this year, there's a strategy behind it, and we're going to talk about that in segment two. But a big part of that, a spoiler alert for segment two, is playing the changeup off the fastball. Like you get guys to see your fastball and then you dazzle them with that changeup, get them to swing and miss over it for strike three and, or get some soft contact. And Patrick Sandoval, I don't know what he's doing up there. Mm, and yeah. I I have given him credit from spring training onward for not losing his cool, but it, it was all going to explode in that game. And it, it looked like he was about to burst. And I know yeah. he didn't, he, uh, didn't keep his cool when the umpire called a balk on him, which was a balk, by the right. way. You can't right. do that. And and so he he totally went off on the umpire. Mike, it's just all this stuff is bubbling under the surface. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so it just it doesn't look like he has a game plan when he goes up there. I don't know how he has gotten so far away from who he was in 2022 because the problem I have with his performance is that the he has all the tools. The yeah. tools are there and Everything he did in 2022 is still there for 2024. It's all between the ears for Patrick yeah. Sandoval. Johnny, he's he's double-minded. And what I mean by that is that he's not going out there just with a game plan. He has to have a game plan for his emotions. He has to have a game plan for how he's feeling, right? And you're exactly right. When you saw things fall apart for him, and we'll talk about Moniac not getting a fly ball that should have been out number three, and how he, you know, he put his head down, but then you can tell he, he was like, nope, I can't do that. And then he looks up, nope, I can't do that. And looks mm -hmm. over, right, nope, I can't do that. You, like, you can tell he's arguing with himself in his head, yeah. which I appreciate. Like, he's really making an effort. But you and I both know it, and our everydayers know this. Those of us that have jobs, whatever the job might be, if you go to your job and you have all of this emotion that you have to kind of control. All this tension and, bubbling and up. And do your job, right? Like, you're, you're going to be about 50% here and maybe about 40% here and about 10% over there. And that's what it feels like with Patrick Sandoval on the mound, right? And the minute you get that email or that meeting that could have been an email and you burst. Oh man, I can't believe, I can't believe me. I can't believe me. Oh, you just knocked your camera. Just <laughs> I did. Got really excited. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, I got to control my emotions. Gotta, yeah. Gotta come on, Patrick. What are you doing here? Here we go. 
Johnny, uh, I think that I think that Sandoval does have a game plan because I think Enright has given him a game plan. I, I have confidence in Barry Enright in being able to give him some sort of direction. It just feels like he gets so lost when he's out there. Like it all just kind of falls out of his brain. And the and even his start against the Marlins, I know that it was a, a better start, but this one felt more like the Sandoval we saw last year and the Sandoval we saw against the, the Baltimore Orioles, right? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Hey, one note in this one, the out umpire was given Savali the high strike, but wasn't given that to Sandoval. And that's frustrating too. I understand yeah. that, but you have to adjust. You have to adjust your game plan. If they're not going to give that to you, you didn't earn it either. You were all Thank over you. the zone. I was just going to say, don't you have to earn that? You have you to earn, earn that. It. And if you're going to be thrown all over the zone, he's not going to give that to you. No, Savali looked not. like he was in control, and that's why he got that top of the zone strike, right? Exactly, and it did cause the Angels to swing a bit more at that pitch because it was being called a strike, which is not yeah. a swing and a, a pitch that you want to go after. Yeah, let me take you through the game, uh, just some highlights of what happened in case you missed it. Uh, bottom one, Angels got the scoring uh, got the scoring started with uh, Moniak singling and then Mike Trout hitting a home run 397 feet to dead center f- field. Yeah. It was a sinker that Savali tried to throw just above the zone because he was going after that high strike, but it missed and Trout crushed it. His sixth home run in 11 games. He's the first angel in franchise history to do that. So immediately 2 nothing. you got to feel good. And it seems as though the Angels have been able to score early for Sandoval. But Johnny, he, he gives it right back in the top of the second. Gave it right back in the top of the second. Before I talk about the top of the second, do you like the halo? Do you like the home run halo? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like it'll, I feel like it, it'll get better as the season goes. Probably. You know what I'm yeah, yeah. I guess I'm just like, I, it, the, it, I even like the samurai at first. I was like, oh, okay, I guess. Right. Cause it felt like it was heavy. Like somebody's going to hurt their neck wearing yeah. that, wearing that samurai hat. Now this year I, I, I get, they'd have to get something else. I like the throwback to the halo around it. It, just, it felt like, uh, Buzz Lightyear was running around the stadium. Like, <laughs> and Trout was like, what is this? <laughs> you know what it is? I wonder if it's like one of those ring lights that we're using for, for the show. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> uh, Sandy did give those runs right back. He started with a leadoff walk and followed that up with a double. The Angels had a play at the plate, but Ohapi's tag was late. Yeah. Of course, this one went to New York. And as we always say, it was, who was it again? Right. The Angels? Oh, yeah. It, uh, well, who's it in favor of? let Oh, the race? Okay, yeah, give him the run. <laughs> right, right. But I felt the, the relay was perfect. It was Trout to Rendipo yeah. to Ohapi, and then Sandy gave up a second run after a bloop, bloop single. It gave up uh, that run, and it tied the game at two. Yeah. Uh, in this one, there was another leadoff walk by Sandoval. It led to another run on an RBI double in the top of the fourth. The pitch from Sandy that was hit for the double was an 0-2 changeup, Mike, mm-hmm. that got mm-hmm. a lot of the zone, and the batter took advantage of it. Then there was that air in right field later turned into a hit by the way. So apparently we're yeah. not, we're not uh, against doing that. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that allowed another run to score more bad defense behind Sandy. It's gotta be because he just throws and throws and throws. <laughs> you right. know what I'm saying? And I know Mickey yeah. overran that one. Taylor Ward did have a great catch in left field. Talk about getting an out above average. Uh, we always talk about how Taylor Ward plays it safe. Yeah. And, and he's going to make the plays that you expect them to make. That diving one he had was pretty great. And then bottom four, Mike, the Angels get a run back. Drury doubles. Shannon will ground the ball up the middle. It went through the legs of the shortstop, made it four to three at that point. And the Angels kept hitting. Ohapi singled. Sean Will went first to third. Ren Hifo had a chance to at least tie the game, but he popped out to left field in the bottom yeah. of the fourth. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, Sandoval's out by the, by the fifth inning. And so Garcia comes in. And then Cisnero comes in. Cisnero gives up a home run, and it made it five to three. And then Hunter Strickland comes in, gives up an RBI single, makes it makes it six to three. And John, I know that there's been a few blowouts, three so far for the Angels, and it doesn't seem like that's on all of the pitching staff. It really is the middle relief. They just haven't been any sort of relief so far this season for the Angels. It's the garbage time bullpen it has been truly garbage time yeah, because right when you have it five to three, and later. You know, the Angels get a fourth run and kind of make it interesting at the end of the game. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a fan of Hunter Strickland. I think yeah. that he uh, has been doing a good job. He, you know, got dinky dude in a little bit there. But guys like Cisnero, I know Luis Garcia didn't give up a run, but he struggled in the past. So, yeah, it's those bridge guys. Mike, this is what happens 
when you're behind in the game and you only go five innings and you've yeah. thrown 101 pitches. And yeah, this is what we talked about all off season was they need another starter because they're going to have these guys go out there, throw five innings, six innings. And we were hoping that Barry Enright would be able to help them navigate that. But so far, only Tyler Anderson and Reed Detmers are the two that have been yeah. able to do that. Yeah. And in the spirit of garbage, I thought the middle relief was special, but apparently it was not special. Hey, bottom <laughs> of the ninth, uh, Hicks gets a little bloop single. And then Sean Noel comes up and, and the dude's scuffling. And it only, it only made those who are like, send him to the minor leagues even more adamant that he needs to be sent to the minor leagues. Yeah. And I'm still adamant that this guy needs to at least have a, a few more weeks up here. And then if, it, if, if by, I think, late April, early May, he's still scuffling. Then I would, I would make an adjustment there, but I think the guy hit 275 last year and had an OPS over 700. So I think that that's guy still here and I want to give him a shot. Plus we're not, we're not going for anything. We're not trying right. to win anything. Right? He's also, he's also looking at strike three in his he last is. bat. He was and trying to draw a walk and you can tell that he I was understand. not ready up, up to swing. And that's the other problem too, is his confidence is really low right now. That's what I'm saying is his confidence is low and, and the Sean well that we've seen doesn't look at that strike three. Right. And, and so he's either going to foul it off or get it down for a hit. Um, so you can tell that the, the confidence is totally missing from this young guy. Yeah. So he strikes out. Oh, Hoppy flies out. Then Renjifo singled and then Hicks was able to score on that. Then Rendon walks and the angels have runners at first and second down by two. And then Miguel Sano pinch hits, pinch hits for Joe Adele. Easy for me to say. And he took a two, two slider upstairs that found the strike zone. That he was just, he, tough he watched it. It was a really yeah. tough pitch. So the angels lose six to four and they've got uh jose soriano on the mound today and that's his first start for the angels in the regular season john what do you anticipate from soriano what are you looking for do you think that he'll be able to go further than five innings or there is there a pitch count what do there's you a think pitch the count there's a pitch count of 60 pitches is what they've said so okay. it'll be interesting to see how deep he goes into that game considering last night they had to use a lot of that middle relief so are we I gonna have that. a i hate pitch counts <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna it's have ridiculous. a lot of jose suarez in this one you know yeah. what i'm saying carson fulmer of course he had a clean inning with 10 pitches so he he's the guy who went 70 pitches and then pitched the next day do you remember that mike yeah he, he did yep. that last year yeah um one note before we wrap up this segment uh you just watched the the rays reliever spike two pitches into the grass yeah. against yep. logan ohapi for the walk Yep. And then I know that uh, that uh, after that, there was a, uh, a flyout. But Renjifo and Joe Adele took a swing on the first pitch after yeah. watching that guy be all right. over the place. Right. I understand Joe Adele was looking fastball and he got it, but it was up in your hands. And so I just I think in a situation, even if you get the pitch that you're looking for, it's not a bad thing to be down. Oh, one. It's not a bad thing to see four five, six pitches, especially against a guy who, again, was spiking that ball 10 right. feet in front of the home plate, Mike. Right. So that was a frustrating thing for me as well. These guys need to see some pitches. Renjifo is prone to swinging at the first pitch. They can't be doing that, especially when you just watch the guy be super well, wild again. So just in that small sample size, it makes sense why Adele's not in there, right? And it might be that he's if he's not in there, he's not going to be able to be anticipating some of that stuff. But also, you have to have baseball savvy in those moments. Mm -hmm. And that's always been my critique is like, I don't care. I don't care what the the inning is telling you to do. If you have a guy that's really struggling with throwing strikes and he's spiking ball, like stand out there and put that bat on your shoulder, put that bat yeah. down. Let him get, let trouble. him get in trouble. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and they, they don't seem like they're they they're not. I don't want to say smart enough, but they don't have the baseball savvy in those moments to know like he's struggling. Don't help him out. Yeah, exactly. Hey, thanks for making Lockdown Angels your first listen every single day. The Angels are playing the Rays at 107 Pacific time. It's a getaway game, so it's in the afternoon. And catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast on Sirius XM with the SXM app. Just search Angels. Coming up on Lockdown Angels, two pitchers you're going to want to watch for. And coming up next, what Tyler Anderson is doing that's leading to a lot of success. Well, it looks like Dodgers Tyler Anderson has reemerged. We're going to talk about all of that coming right up. So how's your fantasy team, John? Are you doing doing okay on, on that fantasy baseball? Lost week one by hmm. a hair. So, Ooh. you know, and, and week two is starting. And uh, I think I think I'm in a pretty good spot for week okay. two. 
Yeah. See, you're good at fantasy. There's some people that may be really good at fantasy, and then there's some that that aren't good at all. And if you're in my category, <laughs> the not good at all, but you can call out stats and you can make a decision whether you want more or less of a certain stat, then Price Picks is for you. Price Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And they're the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. So if you're really sucking in your fantasy league, you can do great with prize picks. Here's how it works. You're going to pick between two and six players and decide if they're going to produce more than or less than the projected stats. So it could be home runs, strikeouts. It could be total bases. It could be doubles. It could be anything. And all you have to do is say, I think that there's going to be less than that. I think there's going to be more than that. So, so simple. And you're not playing against, against a bunch of sharks or people that are watching this every single day that, um, are, you know, sitting in their mama's basement and don't have a job. Like you're, you're, you're actually playing against just you and the numbers and that's the best part. So check out price picks today. And when you do download the app and enter our promo code locked on MLB, and you'll get a first deposit match of up to $100. So the promo code again is locked on MLB, all one word, all lowercase, and you'll get a first deposit match of up to $100. So download prize picks today. Do it right now. Hit pause, hit pause on the show, download prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. This is the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. Every day, it's time to make the switch from your regular sports viewing to check out Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed just for you every single day to bring you the top stories across the sports world. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, all that good stuff. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube and on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Speaking of your team every day, the Angels, your team, are playing the Rays at 107 Pacific Time at the Big A. You can catch every pitch of the Angels' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search Angels. Tyler Anderson is doing something very different this year than what he did last year. Looks like a completely different pitcher. Looks like the pitcher that went 15-5 and five with a two something ERA with the Dodgers a couple of years ago. So we decided to pause for a moment and go back to the game against the Rays game one and talk about what Tyler Anderson did, but also talk about what he's done so far this season. Now be, keep in mind in 2014 or sorry, 2014, 2024. I wish we'd go to the playoffs, <laughs> right? 2024 stats for Tyler Anderson, small sample size. He's only had two starts and 48, ABs against him this season, but the results say a lot about what he's doing differently than what he did last year. So buckle up nerds. Here's some stats for you. Take it away, Johnny. Yeah. Let's look at what the results are, the movement and what he's doing differently. And then where he's throwing it. We got a nice little graphic for you if you're watching, but we'll explain it on the audio side for you. Average exit velocity, Mike in 2022, 85 miles an hour. 23 was 87 miles per hour. 2024, 84.9. So he's mm. back down to those Dodgers numbers in terms of how hard the ball is coming off the bat when Tyler Anderson throws it. Listen to this chase rate. So getting guys to swing and miss and chase after things, uh, or I shouldn't say swing and miss, chasing after stuff out of the zone. 2022, 35.3%. 2023, 29.5%. So down four, no, sorry, six points yep. from 22. This year, 41.6%. Wow. Now, I could definitely see that chase rate going down because it, it, it'll it'll take some time because he needs more starts, but it's a great yeah. start. He might end up around that 35% from his Dodgers time. Uh, the hard hit rate, how hard he's getting or how often he's getting a hard hit ball against him in 2022, 28.5%, 2023, 32.3%, so four points higher. And this year, 25%, the best wow. out of all three. Now, again, Small sam sample size, but if there's any creep in the wrong direction, it's going to look like that that 22 season. Mike, the walk rate, 4.9 and 22, 10.2 last oh, year. And we all said amen because we mm -hmm. felt that, right? Like he struggled so much in a game, walk five guys, and it was like, throw a strike, dude. What are you doing? Yeah. Uh, 5.9 so far this year, which is great. Wow. The ground That's ball awesome. rate, Mike, in 22 was 40.9%. In 23, it was only 31%, so nearly 10% less than it was in 22. This year, 37 and a half, so it's it's mm. back up there again. So those are the results that Anderson is getting so far 
compared to his bad 2023 and his excellent 2022. So that's great. I love those stats, but what is he doing differently, Johnny, to achieve these results? I think it's important for us to maybe dig into the numbers there. So why don't you share that with us? And I know you got a graphic that our YouTube viewers will be able to see. Yeah. If, uh, if uh, you're wondering how he's achieving those results, let's take a look at the four seam fastball. He's thrown 78 so far in 2024. It's a bit tighter of a pitch, Mike, less inches of drop and less break. Perhaps that leads to a little better control and mm-hmm. less walks. As we see with the walk rate, it's down. The cutter, the velocity is also down from previous years. It was 84.4 so far this year versus 85.1 last year and 85.7 in 2022. So the lowest velocity on his cutter of those three years, it's also led to less movement on it so far, both in the drop and the break. So the left to right movement and the up and down movement. But remember the cutter's most important part is that left to right movement. And this year it's closer to those 2022 numbers, which is great Mm. because the run value of his cutter in 22 was plus five. So it was a plus five pitch on the, on the uh, run value. But the most important pitch Mike is that change up so far, the average miles per hour on it, 79.1 right in line with where his 2022 changeup was. It actually has more inches of drop than last year and more side to side horizontal movement this year or even in 22. So that's fantastic news. Yeah. So he's really almost replicating what he did in 22 this season. And I I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that Barry Enright's around and not Matt Wise, right? We have somebody that actually knows how to help these guys and that's the benefit. And, and go ahead. Oh, I was going to say there's some minor differences between this year and and his Dodger year, but he's the fact is is he's closer to that Dodger year than yeah. he was at all last year. And what's really <laughs> important about what he's throwing this year is is where he's throwing these pitches. And so why don't you talk about that? Yeah, so if you're uh, watching us on TV or on YouTube, wherever you get your video version of Lockdown Angels, you can see I have the four seam fastball uh, for each year on the top portion and the change up from the same year on the bottom portion. Now, if you take a look at it, you can see that this year he's throwing that fastball up and in and the change up down and away. Now, if you notice the 2024 graphic is a little splotchy, Mike, and because it's early in the season, that's why it's so splotchy. It's probably going to look more like it does uh, in the other two years by the end of the season. Yeah. You can see that because he's throwing that fastball up and in and the changeup down and away, the vertical and horizontal break from the changeup is making that motion. Uh, 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 you can see that the arrow there is going from that right to left uh, if you're facing a right-handed hitter from Anderson's side. So again, yeah, you can see that in 2023, look how similar where the dark red is Mm -hmm. right there in the middle Mm -hmm. of the strike zone. Dark red is where most of the pitches land in the strike zone, not much movement and not much difference between his four seam where that was ending up and where his change up was ending up. So if you go back to 2022, which is all the way there on the right side, you can see, look where the red is in the top graphic for the fastball and look where the change up red is down and away away from a right-handed hitter, in on a left-handed hitter. Very similar 2024 map and a similar 2022 heat map. Uh, The change-up movement in 2024 and 22 are very similar. Last year, there wasn't much of a difference. Again, Anderson is getting chases at 41.6% so far this year. Over the full 2022, that was 35%. And again, if you look at 2023, it was under 30% and you can see why right there in the middle. It it just was not fooling anybody because they were so close together. So if he continues to throw his fastball in that spot and throw the change up down and away, like he did in 2022, he's going to have a lot of success this, this season. And so again, I think if, if we need to kind of sum this up, Anderson's working up and down in the zone that's getting hitters to look up or down for the pitch. And Anderson plays off that he's going to throw the change up after the fastball. It gives him a lot of options. For example, let's say that Anderson throws a change up at the top of the strike zone. 
the hitter thinks, okay, here comes a changeup. He's going to play that off a of fastball, so the changeup's going to be up as well. And then he can put that changeup down low and away and get guys to swing over it. So depending on where he puts the hitter's eyes, depending on where he throws that fastball, that makes all the difference on where he can place that changeup. And I think that's why he's having a lot of success this season. Angel fans, are you working on your car or your truck or your SUV? If you're like me, you need a whole lot of help, and that's why eBay Motors is on your side. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. So if you just need regular parts, go to ebaymotors.com. But if you need those peak performance, you need those peak performance, those things that make your car go, Ooh, or somebody sees it and goes, wow, look what you've got on your Honda Accord. You need to go to ebaymotors.com. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, everything for your Honda Accord, right? Everything you need for your car or your truck or your SUV, whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. They have 122 million parts, more than that actually, from your auto to your truck to your SUV, and you're going to find exactly what you need and exactly what you're looking for. With the eBay Guarantee Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every single time or your money back. And with all these parts, you can get it at the price that you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home a win for you and for your family. So keep your car, truck, or SUV alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. The eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Mike, you teased it yesterday, and at the beginning of the show, you've got some names that you want to share yep. that we should all be paying attention to, specifically two young pitchers. Let's talk yep. about it. Let's talk about one that uh, you know and talk about one you don't know. So let me start with the one that you don't know, and that is Barrett Kent. Okay, He's a starter for the 66ers, just about... 20 minutes from where I live. And so I need to go. I need to you actually better get out. down there. I, I sit there all the time. <laughs> I'm busy, you know, I'm busy watching angel games. Uh, and so I, 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 he, he pitched really great on Friday night. John, listen to these stats, five innings, two hits, one earned, no walks, eight K's more impressive through just 66 pitches in five innings. Take notes, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> that's not two innings. That's five, five innings. innings. Right? And yeah. then here's the best part. 48 of them for strikes. And he had 12 swinging strikes Love in that, that game. So Love the that. guy was on it and was really focused. Now, a lot of scouts are saying that he projects as a top of the rotation starter. So Caden Dana, Barrett Kent, like these guys are in the minor leagues and have the potential to be with the angels within the next year or two years or three years, depending on how they grow. And a lot of scouts are saying that Barrett Kent has a Garrett Cole like ceiling. Now, I don't know if you've seen uh, Kent throw. There's some great videos on YouTube. You should search for it. Go to MLB.com. You can also search for it there. He throws, his mechanics are very similar to Garrett Cole. He has mm. just, he kind of comes up with his hands, a little short arm on the right hand side, and then he fires it in. And a lot of people are saying that he's got a Garrett Cole like ceiling. Isn't it funny that we're at the point where Barrett Kent was probably watching Garrett Cole in high school, maybe yes. even junior yeah. high. And yeah. he's like, I want to be like that. And now he's in the minor leagues. Garrett Cole is old enough to have somebody in their lifetime go, I want to be like Garrett Cole. I'm going to do what he's doing. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's wild to me because yeah. I remember when Garrett Cole came up with the pirates, right. you know, what with I'm the saying? pirates that was, that's, that's like centuries ago, right? Yeah. That's, the, that's pre COVID. <laughs> that's so long right. ago. The now the other names, name, the other name, you know, and that's Andrew Wance and he, yeah was a reliever, turned into a starter this spring. And so last Thursday night, Johnny, Wance went six innings, gave up one run, two hits, and 11 Ks for the Salt Lake Bees. It's a manly name. And, and here's what scouts are saying. Scouts are saying that, that Wance has a great idea of what he wants to do on the mound. So hmm. can I just steal your line? Pay attention, Sandoval. <laughs> he has a great idea of what he wants to do on the mound, and he's taken to, be, to being a starter better than most relievers who are turned into starters. And mm. so they're really confident in this guy. Here's the other thing that was noted from that game in Salt Lake and where the bees play and that league that they play in, it's a very high offensive league. Of course. And so there's a lot of hitting and it's like thin airs in some places. And so there it's easy to have a high batting average. It's why the angels have a lot of guys coming from double a 
to the major leagues and not just triple A to the major leagues. Yeah. But Wance is just being stretched out really. And for him to go six strike out 11, give up just one run on two hits, I think is a really great sign. So think about this, Johnny, you've got Wance, you've got Rosenberg, you've got Davis Daniel, and then you've got a guy, a young guy, Caden Dana and Barrett Kent, all of these guys waiting in the wings to step into the rotation when asked to do that, or if they make the major league roster. So that's pretty exciting for this angel team of those two guys, Kent and Wance. What, what catches your eye? Which one made you go, Whoa, that's interesting. Well, certainly the comparisons to Garrett Cole, if that's, if that's the comparisons that he's getting for Barrett Kent, that's huge, Mike. And I am willing to be patient to achieve a Garrett Cole like, ceiling with yeah. Barrett Kent. So if it yeah. takes three years, then it takes three years. Don't rush him. You don't need him up right now. Like let's develop this guy. Let him become who he needs to become. Because if that is true, if that's what scouts are saying about him, then that's very exciting. The one thing I'll say about Andrew Wance is this. He's going to really have to do a lot to convince me that he's a different guy when he's a starter, mm. just from how much we've seen him as a relief pitcher, he's not been bad. He's right. not been outstanding. Uh, he, you know, he's been kind of your standard middle relief guy. And maybe it's just the, the role that he's been in with the angels the last couple of years that kind of puts me off a little bit. Maybe I'm also a bit bitter that they're converting all these relievers into starters because that was their game plan and not actually getting a starting pitcher. <laughs> but you know, some of the best start out as relievers. Yeah. Uh, CJ Wilson was a reliever and then he became a starter with Texas. And so you never know what you could get out of some of these guys. I, I, every, every pitcher comes to the professional baseball wanting to be a starter, yeah. right? Unless you're like a specialty guy, maybe like Ben Joyce, who went through college, did a lot of relief, did a lot of closing, but every starting pitcher, or I should say every pitcher wants to be a starter in the majors. You come in with that, that goal. Not everybody makes it and that's okay. Yeah. But I think Andrew Wance, it's a great start. And I think he even got the uh, pitcher of the week he award yep. last week for that. So that's, that's a fantastic way to start. It's going to take me some convincing in order to get me on board with that. So let him keep doing his thing and, and I'll buy if he turns in more results like he did for the Salt Lake bees the other night. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. The Angels play the Rays today, 107 Pacific time, and you can catch every pitch of the Angels hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM map. Just search Angels. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over and find the show on YouTube. Get in the comments section. It's the best way to get in touch with Mike and I and be part of the conversation. Mike, what do we have on deck for Thursday's show. Uh, Soriano's on the mound today, so we're going to recap that start, see how he did, and hopefully the Angels can come away with a victory. Remember, we're the only Angels podcast that is available five days a week. We're recapping every single game. So join us tomorrow as we recap this final game against the Tampa Bay Rays. Looking forward to that. We hope you'll come back and join us again. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Thanks for being here with us, everybody, and we'll see you back here on... Wednesday till Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. <laughs> Got my date screwed up. It's we been a long week. It is.